Welcome, everybody, to the Star Citizen Podcast. And it is a lovely October day here. And uh, Zell's with me, and uh, we're going to have a fun one tonight. How about a Zell? Mm. I guess it depends on your uh, description of fun. <laughs> Howdy do, everyone. Uh, it's good to see wherever you may be around the world. You know, if it's afternoon, night, or in the morning on the way to work. Good day. Now, one of the things you may notice on the screen if you happen to be watching on YouTube, and if not, that's just fine. Uh, we have a little bit of some graphics on here today, and we're going to be discussing a few things but one of them we're definitely going to be discussing this kind of master modes and you know in kind of a recent video by avenger one um you know who i think giselle you know just to start off with you and i have a lot of respect for um as somebody who you know represents the combat side of star citizen and and uh, you know is, is usually a pretty fair operator yep um a lot of respect absolutely and so with that being said Sometimes don't necessarily agree with him, but respect his opinion. Absolutely, absolutely, and I think uh, you know I've always said myself I'm a sheep among wolves in Star Citizen, and and I understand that. Uh, I I I think that it's always good to have a healthy respect for the different types of gameplay, and um, and we're definitely going to be talking about that. But before we do that, um, I want to mention something. And Sal and I were talking, you know, uh, last night, and and. Um, uh, and we, you know, as we we kind of do some pr preparation when we go to talk about these machines, uh, or pardon me, these um, these uh, 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 podcasts. And uh, what one of the things I will say is is we absolutely left the idea open of there being a three seventeen four that um, that did not include potentially all the things that three eighteen had in it. Um, and that's funny how that came to pass, though. <laughs> well, <laughs> I think uh, I think we've gotten pretty good at uh, at least going through all the possibilities and and uh, at least thinking about every scenario because as it relates to the game, uh, anything could happen. So yeah, well, it's it's it definitely seems now timeline is definitely you know it's kind of. Gone to the wind. Uh, you know, I think they need to get it right more than they need to get it fast. I think they've realized that. I will say, I think the funny thing was, is, you know, uh, when you and I, Zell, were talking about the 317-4 possibility, I, the, one of the last things I said to you was, well, do you think then they're going to maybe sneak the Corsair in as part of the, as part of the IAE, uh, you know, gig? And as well as... Uh, as, you know, do you think that the, that at least that ship is going to make it into three seventeen four? And you were like, "Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> There's no way that's not going in there." Sure, sure enough, that's exactly how it ended up being. You know, uh, you you've got a three seventeen four coming. Uh, there is going to be the Corsair, and I would imagine any other ship that they were planning on, kind of maybe introducing straight to flyable. That's a huge marketing event, and it's not to be lost on uh, you know the technical challenges. That's yeah, it's true. I mean. Um, you know, IEs, their big uh, end of the year ship sale. Um, it's kind of uh, been their bread and butter. They're absolutely going to have these things uh, available. Um, you know, so there's, you know, will probably be a couple of, you know, big reveals. Um, they're going to try to pump up the excitement for people to spend money because let's just face it um, things have been lagging a little bit past six months well so, definitely i mean it's funny i think the the best part of this year was 316 one i mean 316 one was incredibly stable 317 was rushed out the door we all know that and everybody knows the story by now i mean 317 one you know then 317 two um, and now you have a 317.3 and a 317.4 for IAE. Um, we are, you know, to use a V-ism, a little over our skis, <laughs> you know, at this point. Um, and not enough, you know, it is what it is. I mean, I would rather have a stable situation than, uh, you know, than, than, than uh, you know, something that's definitely 
Um, like I, I just felt like I was playing the PTU before they released 317, and I thought to myself, I don't know that it's ready for prime time. And of course, with uh, Invictus, it went out, and it proved to be not ready for prime time. And so I am, I, in one way, happy that they are taking and and doing a 317 for because it's important to understand. I uh, Invictus is a, it's. It's an important time that there's a there's a free fly and there's a lot of new people in the game, and th- and and IAEs are very similar in that regard. You know, you pick up a lot. There's a, the player. There's a lot. You know, new ships are around. There's a lot of inertia. Um, you know, there's a lot of extra people playing the game, and I really feel like a lot of people got a bad experience with 317, who are new players to the game. Um, and uh, I definitely think with IAE they were maybe going to be faced with that if they would have kind of stuck to their guns on that persistent entity streaming where, you know, come hell or high water, you know, where it's, it's going out. Uh, people could have had a very bad experience with it. Yeah. I was rather bullish, uh, to the idea because they were so matter of fact, this is what we're doing. And, you know, we, we've been talking about it for the past couple of months going, well, they missed their target in late August of getting the Evocati out for 318 and, then, you know, next thing you know, we're in mid-September, we're talking about it going, well, shit, man, where's the, uh, you know, where's the Evocati for 318? And then, you know, October rolls around and we're like, well, this is, this is going to be pretty, pretty boinked. And uh, they were like, we're going to have it out for, you know, they, they came out and was like, no, nah, we'll have it out by, you know, first week in November. We'll have it out for IAE. And we're, you know, they were so matter of fact about it. You were like. Where it's like, yeah, you know, for something that they specifically came out and said, this is going to be a tough one and we're going to need a lot of lead time. It it sure did devolve pretty quickly. And um, so now uh, they came out and said, oh, we'll have it by, you know, the beginning of December. Well, you know, we're just going to have to look at it you know, take the rose tinted glasses off and just kind of look at it for what it is. And, um, that'll be the last thing that they get out this year before they go on holiday break. It's a, it's a really good way to look at it. I, you know, it's funny. I forgot that you'd, you'd mentioned that last night when we were talking that there is that final week, you know, I think, uh, things end on like the 23rd, I believe on is a, is a Friday, you know, yep, so you're leaving for Christmas. Yep. And so, you, you know, it really, we probably will see salvage tier zero then three eighteen and persistent entity streaming then. Um, if not, well, if, if it's not, I mean, because they called it a, a release like a target date. You know what I mean? Uh, if yeah. if not, at least I bet you it will be heavy in the PTU where people are still well, kind of flying. You know, still playing that way with it. I, I tell you what, you know, I'd put money that they're going to leave PES off this. They're going to leave, they're going to have something fairly stable. Uh, They're going to put out a few things that, you know, uh, salvage uh, what they have left of the cargo refactor. And what I mean by what they have left is the whatever they have of the cargo refactor. Uh, the new missions, um, and they'll have that content out for people to play around with during the holidays. They're not going to leave something like PES that could come with a whole host of issues. They're not going to leave that during their their Christmas break. They They won't. So you th- they're going to see they're going to probably reevaluate where they're at by mid December and then make the choice of uh, leave uh, persistent entity streaming for uh, three eighteen one. They very well I, could. I see that's how it's going to play out. Oh, man. that's an interesting. You guys heard it here first. So, so in your mind, things like the Daymar crash site or and the cargo system refactor and whatever. You know, and I, I have, I have yeah. some questions about the cargo system refactor as far as what state it's in. Um, you know, but but that, of course, we'll see um, 
you know, we will see um, Salvage Tier Zero with the Vulture, um, and then maybe the Grey Cat Multi Tool. But the the thing that may or may not make the cut in your mind for three eighteen, even in that target time, we're talking like by the twenty third of December, you're 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 thinking it's, it's going to be a game time decision sometime in earlier in uh, December about about PES. Yeah, but yeah. Th that's my feeling. On yeah, it. that's it's um you know i feel like this is kind of a a bigger onion than they considered and uh to peel and um i just don't you know it, this is you know this is kind of a complicated <clears throat> this is kind of complicated mechanics as it relates to <clears throat> game engine stuff and it's going to need because you can already tell with their internal testing, they tried to get something pretty stable because I was, you know, they were trying to damn the torpedoes and then just considered that it's too, you know, it's too screwed to even try it. And I honestly don't feel like a month is going to be enough time for them to sort things out. If they couldn't sort it out internally, no way they're going to sort it out in this lead up into December. I, I just, I, I don't think so. I think what they'll do is they'll release all the content that they can uh, for people to mess around with, mm -hmm. you know, give people something to do over the holidays and revisit it. You know, at the beginning of the year. Well, you know, and, and, and adding some context to what it is you're saying, I mean, you know, they had announced that 318 was going to be out at IAE. And that was about a week before it went into Eva Cotti. Okay, they put it in Eva Cotti. And you, we know that first group of Eva Cotti is fairly, you know, it's a fairly limited size group. I mean, um, you know, it's obviously not your PTU Wave 1 or 2 or anything. You know, it's a, it's a but once they did put it out, then you we seen a couple of builds where it was like they turned off a lot of stuff trying to kind of maybe isolate some things and yeah. then they came back out and announced yeah we're not going to be doing a 318 for for <laughs> yeah, uh, IE. so <laughs> it, it, they got some like they you know they just established a baseline or they did some metric testing and you know or they realized that there is something far more and, and listen it's a core technology. It's a super important core technology. And there was always going to be challenges and hurdles with it. And, and you know, and uh, I could definitely see that, you know, where uh, you get most of 318 and then potentially a 318.1 maybe by mid-January or whatever that they finally do kind of put the persistent entity streaming in. Um, I definitely, let me ask you this. Do you think there's any chance that PES could fall back to a 319? Uh, no. I feel like they were going to want to get it out in the in the 318 cycle. It'll be 318X. Yeah. It, it, and I feel like they're going to try to hit those hit those points. The way it looks, the way it's looking like now, we're not going to see three nineteen before f mid February. So, yeah, and, I and we're we're definitely looking at pyro being down the road, man. If it even it may be this time next year <laughs> before we see pyro. Well, I think yeah. I you know it's funny. I mean we we've talked about pyro. We've talked about when pyro is gonna be, and um, you know I think yeah. I think that you know there was you know originally you and I were a little um, a little more um, hopeful that it was gonna, yeah, I mean, that it was gonna I was be out earlier. I was definitely bullish that it was gonna be, you know. Or Q1 of next year. Yeah, um, yeah. I remember, like, it's funny, because I, I remember thinking, man, it's probably going to be April, and you're like, no, they can maybe have it out even sooner than that, you know? Um, but, you know... Um, that, you know, but that was also... Uh, 
you know, if they met their targets. And, and that's exactly that, and that's exactly right. I think we were saying that pretty much around when 317 first dropped. You know, yep. you know, before we realized that they were going to kind of get on this slide, right? Because that's what happened. 317 came out before it was ready. And I can say that because I was playing the PTU a good week or two before 317 came out. And, and you know, I was playing it even the day before it came out. And I'm like, they're not going to release this tomorrow. They're just going to, they're just going to do what they're doing. It's funny. Like what they're doing in IAE was what I thought that they were going to do. In an, at Invictus, which is keep 316 and just kind of roll the Invictus stuff into it, you know, the yep. ships or whatever, and then figure it out, you know, later. Because the, the last thing you want is for people to have a bad experience in a free fly, you know. And, well, but they, you know, so I, you know, maybe there was a lesson learned in that capacity. Well, that, yeah, I, I believe you're right on that. And with, you know, with how we were feeling at the time, you know, it's kind of a, it's kind of a tricky game. You know, this prediction game. It's kind of tricky. You're, it you is. basically you're, uh, you're hypothesizing all these things based on information that you have, and by, um, you know, them setting certain precedents. So with them, uh, we thought they well, at least I thought they were getting into this mode where they were at least trying to meet deadlines right and uh, for me that seems like they were setting a precedent especially with 317 and i thought and you know with you know communication that we've had um with them saying hey look <laughs> you know we're gonna have you know we're gonna have these out no matter what you know we're gonna have 318 out by iae uh you know, th this type of behavior had left me, you know, feeling bullish about certain things, whether it was ready for prime time or not, they were going to get it out. And, uh, you know, hot fix it down the road. Um, maybe it was one of those things where that was the idea but you know it, <laughs> it it was a little too much it was it you know it wasn't even in a state that you could release it and you know half ass play it right. where you know you could hot fix it later it was it was yeah it's not worth it <laughs> it's you know it's crashing things or whatever it's just you know the amount of time that they messed around with it they gave it 2 days it must have been in a really pretty buoyant state for them to go, mm, yeah, we're not even going to play with it anymore right now. <laughs> we're going to try to get what we need released for IAE, which is basically 317.4. Uh, get that sorted out, and then we'll revisit it, you know, after IAE. You know, and here's, and, here's uh, a big question, you know, like uh, <laughs> just kind of playing this out, right? So let's say... Let's say they do by Invictus have, you know, you know, persistent entity streaming as, you know, like maybe a, you know, a 318 or whatever. Cause I don't, who, you know, 319 then, it looks like it's probably, you know, and I'm just going to venture a statement. It looks like if they get the PES in, then maybe what they could potentially do is persistent hangers, you know, um, and then maybe, maybe, trying to get the cargo thing sorted out by midsummer before pyro you know i hope i mean that would be my hope is that once they get the persistent entity streaming in that that some of the 319 release view deliverables would be stuff like persistent hangers and you know and there being you know kind of this whole system for moving around cargo um, you know, because it does seem like that we're going to get some kind of a fledgling um, cargo refactor, but it may well, not even have the minimum viability of, you know, like it, like how much of it's going to be magic poof versus loading things. And then when we're you're getting, we're getting cargo light, that's what we're getting. Yes. <clears throat> and it's going to be, it's going to be down the road before. 
we get anything that any semblance of what we were thinking cargo was going to be with the, you know, unloading, uh, loading, unloading, snap to, um, you know, instead of going to a terminal and going, Hey, uh, I need, you know, um, 174 SCU of this. And yeah, yeah, it's poof. It's, you know, it, magic poof, right? It's right. the only thing different than, it, you know, the only thing different today than it's going to be for 318 and their cargo light is, yeah, you might be able to pick up a box and carry it off. That's, that's it. Yep. You're going to be able to, those stacks are still going to magic poof onto your ship. Now, when you open the door, somebody may be able to take a tractor beam and, and just kind of pull stuff up, up off the top. You know, but oh yeah, people will be able to steal it from you, but it. Uh, but you as know, far as as be... far as the mechanics to kind of load it and snap it and have it be, you know, yeah, it's not it's not going to be what it's supposed to be. It's going to be cargo light. Well, it's going to be inventory. Gonna be, oh, is basically I mean, it's going to be a minimum viable product, and I would argue that inventory was you know kind of a great, you know, of course, super fun uh, and and really cool. But man, there wasn't even a drag and drop you know what i mean like a like a uh, or a part of me like a shift click or a, a, a mass highlight and you know type of thing and so it's like a move all right button. exactly or a move all button and, and that's a big art you know one of the th big arguments with chris and uh with chris roberts and and just them saying that you know when we're going to squadron 42 you know that systems are going to come over into the persistent universe in a much more fleshed out state and i and beginning to wonder if that's actually the case because I don't necessarily, I'm beginning to wonder if squadron 42, a single player PVE game really is the best sandbox for the persistent universe. I mean, quite honestly, and, and a big part of what me has, has me wondering about that is quite honestly, ma these master modes, you know, like, it, you know, if that's like, if you're trying to sell them to me, you know, as, like, hey, Squadron 42, we realize that we're going to be more fleshed out and have better systems and things are going to get introduced into the persistent universe in a better state. But if if it's not an applicable, you know, if it's if it's kind of apples to oranges, if like, you know, like if you're developing systems for a single player PVE game, how much cross application are they actually going to have in the persistent universe? And and in some cases you may not necessarily you may be kind of solving problems that you don't have or that are different in the persistent universe a single player pve game is a far different situation than the persistent universe well look you know let's not kid ourselves we we all know kind of like the reasoning behind slowing combat down and in the beginning, look, I was all for it. I was fine. And, you know, I already kind of had a, an idea of probably what they were going to do. What I didn't have an idea is the way they're going to, you know, how the metrics are going to work for SCM. And people can call it whatever, the standard control mode. But basically, for me, it's standard combat mode. And... That's one of the things that, look, the way I saw it, or the way I felt it should have been, or the way I perceived it was going to be, was that, yeah, okay, fine. If you want to participate in PvP and you want to slow things down to, you know, make things a little bit more calculated and, uh, you know stop with the 1200 meter per second jousting or what you know whatever the case may be then fine then switch into your modes your guns go live and then you know you guys can have at it you know shooting each other at 300 meters a second whatever but now we're looking you know like we we did today you know started getting you know it started churning up again you know it started getting get a little hot under the collar, especially, um, and, and I'll let, you know, it was something that brought your, to your attention, but you seem to be more invested <laughs> in it than I was, is um, 
you know, the idea of disengaging from, you know, from the standard control mode, uh, making it easier to disengage, whatever the case may be. I mean, we, uh, we watched the Avenger 1 video, and, and like we say, man, we, we respect him. Yes. And we understand what he's talking about and, and from that particular point of view. But one of the things that he was also talking about was that, you know, all things being equal, let's just come up with a number. And he was using 300 meters a second. So you as a caterpillar or a C2 are moving at 300 meters a second while an arrow or a gladius is going to be moving at 390. And that's, you know, that's a 90 meter difference. Okay, fine. The reason the reason it seemed more reasonable is that you were going to make these speeds up. Uh, you know, it's like, well, if you wanted to turn and run, then you would switch all your powers to engines and, you know, put all shields rear facing and, you know, make a break for it. Uh, and, you know, the idea seemed plausible. But when we were doing a little bit of, you know, because we we're going to talk about the, the spirit a little bit. But when we were kind of looking at their Q&A today and the stuff they had released on it, you know, I started looking at at other ships uh, to kind of compare to the spirit. And then I noticed something. And this is what kind of set us off again. I kind of lit things up. Is that they've they've already went and changed on the website standard control mode speeds in the specifications, and so I went and looked at you know ships that you know these ideas would be applicable to you know cargo ships and things like that, and then what the you know, standard control mode speed was for Gladius and an arrow and okay. Standard control mode speed for a Gladius, 280. Standard control mode speed for an arrow, 270. Standard control mode speed for a C2. It being the quickest of the cargo haulers. 135. So now we're in a pretty big deficit between <laughs> between 280 and 135. So basically what you're trying to tell me at a you know and and then the caterpillar was 130. So at a hundred meters per second differential, I am not going to make up 150 meters a second by switching my engines completely to full and getting away in this mode. It's not happening. And you know, contrary to popular belief, and you're going to ask a lot of different people, and this is this is what you were getting at, and I'll let you I'll let you go on this one because, you know, this is <laughs> this is where you're, you you were feeling pretty strongly about because, you know, it's like well, you know, if this is how we have to play it, then okay, it's perfectly fine. If this is the scenario, if the scenario worked out the way. A lot of these people are trying to describe it or how it was supposed to be worked out or how it was described to us then okay then you know we could probably bite the bullet and fucking deal with that but with the very fact that you're slowing me down in a cargo ship in standard control mode speeds at 135 meters per second hell i go faster than that landing my damn ship on the pad not only is it going to be fun, but you're going to be screwed is the bottom line. And I'll let you take it from here. Well, I mean, look, the first thing I want to say is this is forced PVP mode. This is what it is, you know, and, and, and there's a whole lot that's going to go into this. Let me preface all of this by saying, you know, um, I have always said that I am a sheep among wolves. You know, 
uh, I absolutely 100% agree with Avenger 1. It is definitely on me to understand my ship, what my options are, and proper disengage technique. But what is completely lost in all this conversation is my disengage technique is should not have anything to do with me slowing down. The thing that's blowing me away about all this stuff is, you know, like you have the energy, you have the engine, weapon, shield system, but what you should have is the engine, weapon, shield, sensor system, okay? And the thing is, is I should have, when I'm cruising around in my C2, I should be in like, you know, basically a lot of power to engines and a lot of power to sensors, you know, especially if I'm not allowed to have shields up and I should be able to detect your ship at hundred kilometers away, 75 kilometers away, 50 kilometers away. I should be able to detect your ship, some kind of a reasonable range. There should be sensor mode and I detect your ship with enough time for me to then target your ship and to get a reasonable readout on what you are. And I'm like, hmm, I'm flying my C2 and that's a couple of arrows over there. Why are they 5,000 for me all of a sudden? I should be 35, 40 kilometers away. Yeah, I'm going to spool my quantum drive and go. This whole concept that you can't get, it's like, well, you know, yes, I get it. If somebody shows up in a mantis and somebody shows up in a blue and somebody shows up, uh, you know, with, with, with the exact right meta of ships and they're com completely coordinated uh, in the way that they handle their business and they create a quantum interdiction event and I get hit, I get it. And I'm okay with today's system. Because here's the difference, right? I can, if anything red shows up on my radar, I hit, I'm spooling my quantum drive and I'm jumping out of there. I'm not slowing down into some other kind of a mode to see if I can get away from you. Yeah, man, it's, I it's mean, like switching to driving, you know, driving Miss Daisy mode. It's, uh, I mean, uh, it, yeah. as much as, you know, and, and this is the thing I want to be super respectful of. As much as you want to combat, combat person, understand, is as interested as you are of, is, is, is having combat, and I guess getting me into combat with you, please understand that I am just as invested in having nothing to do with it. I don't, you know, do I want the threat there? Sure. If I happen to be wandering out into the kitchen and I'm munching on chicken and not paying attention to my sensors, <laughs> you know, and I come back to the helm and I'm like, oh crap, I'm surrounded by guys. But you know something? Outside of that, I want my sensors to pick you up in a long ways away and punch out. You know, well, if you're using a stealth ship, fine. But this is this is a forced PvP mode. That's what this is. And I do want to make a couple other points before I let you riff sell. You know, like I had said said this earlier to you. I have, you know, I, listen, I don't have a big community. I have, I have a couple thousand subscribers. Uh, in that couple thousand subscribers, I have a demographic. And in that, you know, and here's, I am just a miner. You know, I go out and I do some mining. So, of course, I attract a certain type of person and I live in my own echo chamber. I, I get that. But I'm going to tell you right now. Most of the people who are on my channel are older gamer guys. You know, these are guys in their 40s, 50s, and 60s, and some in their 70s, who just want to log on, do a little mining, and log off. It's a hobby. If you think... One of the reasons that the game's got so many investors right now is because... You can do that. I've only, like I said, I've only been, you know, I've had a, been targeted a couple times, locked down a couple times, and lost, you know, 700,000 or 500,000 or whatever here and there. I'm okay with it, only because, you know, out of most of the time I go flying, you know, I uh, I don't hit those snags. If, if there's a regular situation where every time I'm out flying in the verse, I've got to get, you know, I'm flying around with no shields, apparently no sensors, and just... Combat ships just happen, you know, along, and my, my only option is to drop down into a much slower mode in order to to figure out some kind of a way to get away. 
I don't think you understand. You are going to absolutely destroy your player base. You're, will the last seven PvP, PvP players turn off the lights on the server? I mean, <laughs> you better... You, you've... And this and the the just circling back real quick, if this is what Squadron Forty Two is going to package up and, and and bring into the PU, I don't like it. Okay, don't. This is a PV. The reason you want to slow. The reason this works, slowing down and having these master modes in Squadron Forty Two, is because you're flying around in a single player game. It's a single player game. So world so so 1944 Circle Spitfire versus Messerschmitt, you know, combat works in a single player game. You know, I, I am, you know, and, and there are I and I mean this in the most respectful sense, I truly do. But I am I am so confused why so many of the people that I respect, a lot of the content creators, just it's like, oh my gosh, this 1944 space con you know, like World War II combat's it's you know, it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. You know, for for a con for for a combat, you know, situation. I I mean, fine, if you guys want to do that, then like Zell said, go click onto your force PvP combat mode, but leave me out of it. I mean, seriously, I don't, my sensors, you know, I, I should be able to pick you up at 35, 40, 50 kilometers away. Yeah, I don't like the cut of his jib. I'm going to spool my quantum drive and punch out. And trust me when I say I am just as passionate about being able to get away and never have you engage me in any way, shape or form as you are in fighting me. I mean... You, if you are, if a player's allowed, like so, proper disengage mechanics has nothing to do, in the most respectful sense, with to Avenger One. Proper disengaging, to me, has nothing to do with going in from one mode to another. It's me detecting you in my radar and spooling my quantum drive, and jumping. That's well, that's me. Well, here's the thing. I mean, he, <clears throat> like I said, you know, mad respect, whatever, but. And, and, of course, he may not be aware of the metrics. You know, he, he was spitballing to begin with. Well, it, but with it, yeah, what, we've seen, what we've seen today, you know, and, and you have to understand, folks, this is brand new. They had just added this. We had, you know, within the last couple of days. If the And, and this is new. So if these are the metrics that we're working with here, this this scenario is never, you know, uh, the scenario that Avenger 1 is, is talking about is never going to fly. If you get caught out, you're screwed. You're done. You're not running away. There ain't no running. And, you know, and, uh, you know, just to agree to disagree with what he was saying well, you can't do it now. Well, yeah, I can. I've done it a shit ton of times. Well, that's exactly right. It's like, do you know how many times I've had somebody show up on my radar and I just spooled my quantum drive and jumped away? I don't. Do you, do you know how many times I've been caught out in a big ship and tanked three or four dudes just, you know, laying into me and then said, all right, dudes, I'm out. See ya. Yep. And, and, and left. Dude, there was a. I told you about that time. I was leaving the surface of um, Hurston, and I had just come from a bunker. I was getting into my um, my Connie. I'd just been doing some bunker stuff. Got into my Connie. There were four dudes. There was a um, an eclipse. A Gladius, a Cutlass Black, and I can't remember what else. It was another medium-sized ship. It was like four dudes. And they were already firing at me before I even got into my ship. Got into my ship, got into the seat, fired everything up, threw my shields to full. They were hovering above me. I bounced up through the top of them, 
boosted straight out. They were all firing at me at the same time. I caught a uh, um, a jump point and blasted out of there. And that was more than 40 seconds of them firing straight at me. And I was in the Taurus. So don't freaking tell me that I can't get away. I can I mean, I, I got away. I was on the freaking ground. Got into my ship, into my seat, powered everything up, and still got away. So, don't freaking tell me you can't do it. Well, and that's, that's what this can. is about, right? That's why they're. That's why they want to make this change because. You know, like in Avenger One, like I said, respectfully, he makes the argument. Well, you have, you know, we're we're faster now that you're going to actually be in better shape to get away. No, we're not. I fundamentally disagree with that. This is just no, not with, because not with, the reason you're changing this is. And first of all, this would be just the first iteration of it. Do you think when they go to change this mode and they put you in master mode and then I'm still getting away that they're not going to tweak it even? They're going to be like, why is this heavy laden? You know, you know, why is this C2 with 799 SCU able to just go ahead and then hit his engines and get away from me? They're, no, you're just going to keep gimping it until I'm trapped into your World War II combat mode. That's, no, it's true. That's, and, and, this you know, is just a slippery thing. slope. I mean, I don't like this at all. You know, this is basically you're taking a PvP situation and you're trying to, you're, throw, you're basically balancing the entire game because some people don't like the way that PV then fix your combat system. Well, look, I mean, I, let's just, you know, let's just say it. Because like, this isn't fixing another, that. It's another classic situation where, um, an MMO has been, you know, screwed over by trying to balance their pvp yes and you know you guys let me know in the comments down below you know i i know i don't know a lot of you guys are you know probably miners and and you know industrial gameplay types but you know let me know if uh you know how big you think the you know why are you balancing you know with three million people three three million backers what percentage of the population do you feel like are pvp centric and then how many people do you feel like these changes people are just loving it you know, I would say probably two, not that many, and maybe so we're two, balancing, maybe you know, two or three out of ten, in my opinion. So what we're doing is twenty percent of the population. We're creating a fundamental mechanic in the game based on PvP because they want to slow shit down. That's absolutely fine, and I have nothing against the way you guys want to play the game. Like I said, instead of calling it standard control mode, call it standard combat mode. Let you switch into that. Your guns go live and you guys can have all the fun you want to do. But, you know, leave everybody else, you know, let, let them stay in their standard mode. And, you know, racers will be happy. You know, us non-combat centric people will be happy. Everybody will be happy. So, uh, you know, yes, I could not agree more. Now I'm going to move on to rant too, Zell. Ready? Okay. <laughs> if you bring that mantis and he locks me down, if I'm forced to be in this mode, that mantis sh should not have shields. It should have to be a lot closer to me than 20 km. And I should be able to turn my ship, target that thing, and put two missiles into him and send him straight to hell and then punch out of there end of story well, i don't well think, that's the thing, that thing should, i mean if it's gonna have a if you're gonna quant th there has to be some kind of a skill out 
Right? I mean, fine. You know, you jumped me. I mean, so, it's a balancing you know, issue, right? Since, you know, it's a balancing issue. You got me. Okay. I guess I guess for whatever reason in this world where two arrows can blow up every single cargo ship, you know, <laughs> because... Or, you know, like because, Avenger 1 was saying, two arrows can take down a hammerhead. That shouldn't be a thing. No, it's just right? like, I hope not. I mean, I hope that they get that fixed where, you know, two... Like, like I think you made the point. It's like, what happened to armor? Like, yeah. where is our, you know, you know, there's other things that I should be involved here, you know. Besides and one gun shouldn't be scratching a heavily armored target. No. That, I mean, that's, that's just the way it is. And, you know, it's kind of like one of those things. It's the whole reason, uh, you know, and the reason I, I bring it up is I'm sitting here staring at this spirit um, spec sheet is, you know, that's the whole reason, like, the Ares was created was that it had a big enough gun to punch through the armor of a capital ship right and you know and to kind of go back to what you're saying with the as it relates to like the manis or the cutlass blue or whatever uh yes there should be a balance there you have to give up something for something right so for it to be to, for it to power up this 20k bubble to interdict you then it should be you know that should be one of the things that uses so much power it doesn't have enough for shields or guns it, it could either do one or the other it could either fire up its interdiction bubble or you can have guns and shields because if they want us to play this freaking game like this then it needs to be set that that that's its balancing factor yep if, 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 if you're exactly right if, if we want to get away we should fire fucking four missiles straight at that dude and, and you know and he's toast sending the davy jones and then yep. you know get sayonara the hell yep my disengage te technique should be whatever ship is using quantum dampening or quantum interdiction immediately dump missiles into that thing and then punch out i mean absolutely you know and and that's the thing you know but it's just like you know i will make the argument again you know because look if you're going to force us into this mode then you here's what you're going to end up having right give us bigger shields and bigger guns well <laughs> here's what you're going to end up having is eventually you're going to have we're not going to take a ship anywhere unless we unless there's a ship out in front of it you know, I mean, that's what you know. If you are making that, they're making that argument, right? They're like, well, you know, you're gonna have to fly around with. But look, people don't want to have to bring. I mean, I know that we do. It's you know, we're in a no, but but we're you, in, a, but, in, a, in a great situation where we, you know, we have a great bunch of guys to play with yep. and stuff. But some people don't. Some people like to. Well, be that's vulnerable. the point, you right? Know? I mean, yes, I'm talking about like we will eventually, if you know, if we're staying to play the game, would eventually then just have you know, uh, you know, a terrapin fly out in front and then just kind of look around and you know, use its sensors and sensor sweep and figure out, you know, what's out there. All right, nothing. All right, come on in, everybody. You know what I mean? But what you're going to do is you're going to, if you think that older minor dude who just wants to fly around and do a little mining in star citizen every single time he logs on is going to want to dick around with scm they don't i mean i got i know that you, i know that you guys don't want to hear this combat people there's a whole bunch of people who want nothing to do with you who just want to play this game with you know and they they, they accept the risk as it currently stands because they can get away to say that we can't get away isn't true. It is true in the sense that if you have, you know, the perfect um, the perfect ships all the time, people aren't that organized in the game right now. You well, know? That's another thing, too. I mean, you look, here's the thing. We need to get back and, and really state, the, state these facts. I mean, you know, I'm going to argue this point that, you know, you're trying to, you know, trying to uh say that we're in a better position in this standard control mode than we were before 
and okay, fine, you get locked down with the manis and things like that. Yeah, you're 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 pretty screwed in, in the current situation. Yep. Yeah, you're 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 done. But by looking at the metrics that we've looked at today, that we just saw today, you're worse off than you are now. I mean, those SCM, they better be, I mean, you know, this whole thing, I mean, Avenger, you know, Avenger's entire point is you're better off getting away. You better be. Yeah, oh, yeah that you're going to be able to, to. You better be, because yeah, because if you're not, because if, be if, away. If, if you think people are going to want to be stun locked or locked into combat because it's funner gameplay for, for, for you, like I said, well, the last seven PVPers shut off the lights on the server. Well, that's I mean, the thing. You're just, uh, you are going yeah, to destroy yeah. this game. I don't think there's a whole bunch of older folks who don't want to dick around with PvP. And oh, oh, by the way, CIG, they're the ones that pay your freaking bills. Right. Those those are the guys that have spent more than a thousand bucks on the game. Now you tell me, you go, you go and find me the PvP guys that have spent more than a thousand bucks on your game. And then, and then, you know, if you're wanting to get this, uh, uh, you know, see this game through for its fruition uh, in the next three or four years, and you lose those people that are buying all this stuff up because they don't like the fundamental changes of your combat system, then it's just the way it's going to be. These people are going to quit. You know, it's like hell. We're even going. You know, we're 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 almost at that point of kicking rocks, going well. Screw this, and we're the people that talk about your game and spend money on your freaking game all the time. So, you know, it, it's just the law of economics, right? Yeah, I'm salty. I mean, if you got twenty percent of your population that all they're into is combat, and then you have the other eighty percent that actually pay for the freaking game pay for the lights in the thousand people that you employ well then you really need to consider what's going on here because i was okay to let it ride but now seeing the metrics the way it is you're screwed either way it's just a mode for you to get fucked in and We'll have to see how it plays out. Yeah, I mean that's that's you know none of the final numbers are out, and this system is not in place. But I guarantee you, if there's a stun lock situation, or if people are cannot just fly, you know, if you don't believe that there's a healthy portion of this game of people that just want to fly around, pick up some cargo, and fly from one spot to another, you are wrong. And if you think that those people are going to want to deal with combat every single day, so, so you know, you know, forced 1944 combat mode, because that's what that thing should be called. Just four circle jerk. I mean, you know, I mean, it's just, come on, you know, it's ridiculous. You don't, if, if there's, if it's easier, if it's harder for me to get away now, why, why how on earth do I just do it every time? You know, and yes, I'm sure if you put together a dedicated team and you hunted me down, you would and constantly wanted to lock me down, I'm sure you could do it. But if you did that, then I just leave the game. And so will everybody else. Well, and that's gotta get back. That's what's going that's, on. Like yeah. if you guys understand what's gonna happen is you start slow boating people, okay? It's only a matter of time before you're going to chase people off and then there's going to be a smaller group of people left. And then you're going to chase more people off and then there's going to be a smaller group of people left. Then you're going to chase more people off and then there's going to be a small group of people left. And then the only people that are going to be left are people that want a PvP. And then it's going to become the dominant PvPers are going to chase off the not as good of PvPers. And then eventually, like I said, will the last seven really, really good PvP guys shut off the lights on the server? Because you know what? I didn't, you know, I'm not, I, while I want to be competent, I don't want to have to pull off some miracle to get away from you. I don't really want you in my life in, in Star Citizen that much. Do I yeah. not want, to, do I not want there to be any danger? No, not necessarily. But for the most part, I want to be able to get away when I want to get away. End of story. 
I don't want to be locked down. I mean, you're just pissed off because you can't stop me now. That's what this is about. You're just pissed yeah. off because people are getting away, so you're changing the system now. That's what's going on, is that you know too many people are getting away from combat and you don't like that. Well, who cares? Deal with it. I mean, put on your big boy pants. Learn to track people down better. Learn to take the meta ships. I don't know. But two arrows, in my opinion, should have... They should not even be anywhere near being able to crack a C2. Sorry. That's how I feel. Between armor, its shields, if there are turret people in there, they shouldn't be even want to get close to that ship. Quite yeah, honestly. And I'm, look, yeah, and I'm looking at you, DCS, with your, you know... Less than 20,000 well, people just, playing the game. Well, it's just like, on that's what I'm saying. It's just like, come on, man. Secret Weapons of the Luftwaffe was in 1991, guys. I mean, really? Do we have to have Circle Jerk, World War II Circle Jerk for... I mean, how long? It's like, is it going to be the year 2075? That's the only fun combat system? Think outside the box, you guys. You can do it. You know? And right now, like I said, I don't... You know... Right now, the way the game... And if you want to make the argument that you can lock me down and get me, you can. You absolutely can. But I like it right now. I'm telling you, if you make people... If you if they're, if they're getting interdicted a bunch and forced into a slow stun lock and then just being destroyed, it is... You're only about two or three times of that happening away from somebody just quitting the game. I don't think you understand. People are not going to consistently keep... Please, combat people, hear me. Okay, if you think for every day for two straight weeks that same guy's going to log on and let you fucking tee off on him, you're wrong. He's going to quit. Well, yeah, like I said, with the, with the metrics, the way we've seen them, and these this is these are new. I mean, these have been in, put in within a week. If these is any indication... Then this disengage situation that that Avenger One was talking about that that is not an option. That's not viable. You're not gonna gain 150 meters a second just by shifting your engines to full. You're also, you know, it's like uh, even if they even if these people put half their you know half their power into engines and guns just to catch you, they're still gonna catch you. I mean, this is not a, a win situation. This isn't a I can disengage horseshit situation. It's not. It's not. No, you're changing it to slow it down. So you're telling me that people are going to be better off now? No, they're not. And I, I will promise you, this is a Trojan horse, if not anything. Even if well, they I'll publish you, numbers, it's like switching. It's trying to. It's a. It's, it's like exactly, trying to change the narrative. It's exactly right. right. It's oh. this is it's just a Trojan horse. Even if they allow. At first, then it's going to be after a while, they're going to have this where people just accept the lockdown mode. You know, it's like, oh, yep, I'm flying around having a grand old time. Oh, God, here comes this guy who wants to PvP. I guess I better go into 1944 combat mode. Oh, you know, oh, wow, I got away this time. Do you think that how many times are you going to get away before they're like, well, this is ridiculous that a cargo laden thing can get away from an arrow? Well, <laughs> really? I mean, you think that they're going to keep allowing that? Like, you, I mean, this whole thing is just trying to smooth it over. It, this is just a, this is just a stealth nerf to just basically force you into PvP. That's all this is. It's forced PvP mode. And yep. you know, and 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 what I'm what I am imploring you, CIG, is to understand. You're going to you better understand. There is a large percent of people, and I'm telling you, it's going to be 60 out of 100 at least, that don't want anything to do with this. I'm, I, I would argue that way more than half of the people don't want anything to do with combat in this game. They want to fly around in the universe and enjoy that's it. That's right, man. They want a big sandbox to go play in. Right. That's it. That's it. And I know that that's... I know, combat guys, I know that you want to... Well, then don't play or whatever or get good or learn blah, blah, blah. Man, we could say that we, we could say the exact same shit in the other direction, which is, you know, once again, it's just like, why don't I have sensors that I can detect you 
at 100 kilometers away and then just spool up my quantum drive and jump away. That's my disengage technique. Why, is that, why, why aren't I allowed that? Well, then I'd never be able to get you. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. You know, catch me when I'm in the kitchen eating chicken. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, that's right. Well, look, catch me I, laughing. I think, they, you know, I, mean, that's I think they need to go back to the drawing board on this situation. Well, that's like what, I said, hell, with even what they got, if they just, if they just, you know, left the other aspect alone and said, hey, fine. You know, if, if you guys want to engage or whatever, you stay, you know, switch down into standard combat mode. Guns go live. You guys have a good time. And then, you know, leave everything else the same. So, you know. I should be able to have, like... But, uh, well, you know, but me being a pirate, I can't be able... I won't be able to catch you, and I won't be able to do... And it's like, look, man. Like like I told V earlier, I was like, what is this? Freaking Star Citizen... You know, Star Pirate? pirate? Exactly. You know, or, or is it Star Citizen? I mean, at the you very know, least, like, if you guys want to have you know circle jerk mode, then give me then get then allow me to then put to just bring terrapins wherever I go and just sensor sweep at a hundred. I mean, that's what I'll do. I'll I'll just F five monkey, whatever. I'll sit there, I'll sit there and just spam you know spam pings at a hundred kilometers every eighteen seconds and and see you coming, and then just jump away. I mean, well, I mean, at least at least we got uh, the standard quantum mode where you know we can quantum away without jump points. I mean, we can just fly through the verse in a zigzag pattern, and you'll never fucking find me. Well, and that's listen. I mean, that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna if you if you make people, you know, first of all, right now, I'm positive. If I were to go set up a mantis right now in a blue and a car to all and a blade and a, you know. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, in a mantis or whatever. And I, and I, and I, right now, if I, if Zell and I logged down right now and set up between Arc L1 and an Arc Corp, I promise you someone's flying into that net <laughs> right now. I guarantee you they'll fly into that net and I may to lock them down and extort the 50 grand out of them. You know, it's not what I want to do, but I'm just saying I'm, it would happen right now all day long. Okay, if you chase players out, you know, there's all these people don't want to fight you. Okay, so they're, 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 they're going to fight you either by just completely just staying out in the air in Halo. They're going to they're, they're going to find ways around dealing with with you. You know, if you think that this is just going to force them into fighting you, you're wrong. They're either going to quit the game or they're going to find ways to avoid you entirely. And I mean, that's, listen, I, I just, I don't know what the solution is, but it's not forcing me into your combat mode, into something that's advantageous to your fighters. It's not. You know, I, I would argue that why don't you just, just leave it to the dang, to the, to the, uh, you know, to the power management system. You know, if I, if I have more shields and, you know, if I have more, if I'm in more shields and engines, and you're in more weapons and you know, and engines, whatever. Le you know, let me, you know, just leave it alone. It's like, oh well, it's not fun when people joust each other. Why? That's your opinion. Because that's all I'm interested in doing is GTFO. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, that's just look. I mean, sorry. Yeah, it's like, well, it's not fun if, well, it's not fun when you're looking around for uh, for 45 minutes for a rock either, but I do it every day. I enjoy it. <laughs> you know? You know, there's, yeah, you know, I'm sorry that, you know, like you, that you're having a hard time pinning people down. Bring the right ships. And look, we, we've stated before, we're perfectly fine with the pirate gameplay. If it's legit pirate gameplay, where you know they're like, "Hey, give me fifty grand, I'll let you go." Okay, fine. But this seems like it's more that one of those situations. It's like, uh, <laughs> "Yeah, we're just gonna kill you, scrub," you know, and then make fun, of, you know, make fun of you online because you're pissed. Right. So, yeah, screw that. I mean, you just listen. Like I said, as passionate as you, as these people are about. 
understanding all the mechanics and blah, blah, blah of all the different, com you know, understanding it, min-maxing every little thing about your ship and blah, blah, blah. I am 100% interested in not in getting away from you. In, in, in knowing that you're there and never even being anywhere near where you can get me. That's what I'm interested in. So, you know, I'll tell you what, or allow me to, uh, allow me to wire a nuke to my ship. So when you do catch me, everything in a hundred kilometers is going bang. Because I'll tell you, that's the way I'll play that game. Everybody's getting smoked. Sounds good to me. I mean, look, I mean, that's that this is the like this is the alternatives that like good people who just want to kind of, you know, play the industrial side of things. When you start trying to make it into, you know, lock mode, lock you into combat mode. That's what this is to me. This isn't getaway easier mode, okay? That's not the why they're doing this. They're not slowing things down so you can get away easier. So, however that you're trying to make, you know, what you know, make the medicine go down. I don't believe it. I think that this is a tr this is a slippery slope. It's a Trojan horse. Pretty soon it will be, you know, I'm cargo laden, so I can only go 90 SC, you know, CM. And it's just like, and you're just going to, it's going to be this, it's just a ridiculous, just feeding frenzy on people. Well, also when, you know, you're fully laden and they add the mechanic, you know, that you're going to be going slower. That's my point. Absolutely. You know, when you're fully laid in any damn way, you know, with, the, like I said, with this, the way that I've lo looked at the metrics today, you know, that yeah, this narrative of, oh yeah, we, you know, we got like a, a way of disengaging. No, no. And that's it's, what I mean. It's know, like, that, that, if you do have a way of disengaging, if that's the facts, it's only a matter of time before you pull me out of quantum or whatever mode and I go into SEM mode and I get away every time in my C2 before you're like, wait a minute, I'm in my arrows. Why is the C2 able to get away with 699 SCU of, you know, of, of stuff on board? It's only a matter of time before they switch that so I can't get away. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it's just, it's that's what I mean. It's just like, it, it may be how you're introducing it now, but what will be, the, it's a slippery slope. You know, it's like pretty soon it will be like, you know, you're we've all if, if we accept it, at, it's like it's like one of those things. Like if you accept it and it's already, you know, pretty soon that we'll be arguing over whether or not we should be, you know, permanently stun locked or not. Well, just get good scrubs. Get yourself some escorts and get yourself. No, come I'm telling you right now, if every single time you log into this game, you need escorts and people to fly with you and, you know, all sorts of BS, you're going well, to destroy your game. I'm promising that's you. That's not viable even with a big org. Yes. It's like, listen, I have a solo pro mining ship. It's called, so that's, what the, that's your words, not mine. I, you know, CIG, it's, I have a solo mining ship. Okay, you know, it's just like, look, you better have places where people can go and mine and not have, you know, combat people breathing down their neck all the time. I promise you, like, what will happen is you will destroy exactly what I said. The minute that right now I feel like I can get away, I understand what Avengers one's saying, and I completely agree with him that if in under certain situations, if I'm pulled out of quantum, there's a blue, there's a manis, there's a competent group, I'm screwed. I accept it. I accept it. Fine, because most of the time, if it's not completely coordinated, and like you said, you know, Zal earlier, you know, you 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 know, you have two or three ships kind of pounding on you. You still were able to spool up your quantum drive and get away. That's right. And that's what's infuriating to you, combat guy. But that's what that's the thrill for us. You know what I mean? You know that you know. And then you know what? If you get us, sometimes you get us. Sometimes if you don't, you don't. But I'm telling you, if you if there's a switch mode where it's like I gotta go. Oh, let's hey everybody, let's all go like you know. It's the 1940s. Let's all go, you know, 200 miles an hour. Yay. That's, it's, I don't, come on. I mean, that's just, 
the whole thing is just a dumb idea. And I understand why it's a perfectly fine idea for Squadron 42. It's a single player PVE game. And it circles back to like this thing that is constantly being said. It's like, well, the reason we split off most of the good people who are designing this game from the PU and, and put them onto the Squadron 42 is because they're going to be able to introduce things from Squadron 42. Well, if this is the first thing you've packaged up from Squadron 42 and pushed it into the PU, I don't like it. That's <laughs> Can I just say that? I mean, you know, I mean, I hate to be so bare knuckles. But like I if this is what if this is the crap that's going to come out of Squadron 42 that's going to be you know shoved down into the PU it, once again this these this master mode when I'm when I'm a single player in a PVE universe by myself if you want to do the World War 2 combat you know like circle jerk whatever but in the persistent universe it's a different situation it's the, I would argue that at this point it doesn't look like there's going to be as much outside of the fact really I mean there, you're going to have a single player com, like a single player game where you're going to have what one thing you're just going to do in your single player game is go waste time like salvaging a bunch of crap no I mean yes there may be a salvage operation mission or two I get that but I don't honestly believe I, I'm beginning to st- doubt very seriously that things are that are that are designed in squadron 42 are going to make it into the persistent universe in a better situation because i'm going to argue that your single player pve game and your persistent universe sandbox are not the same they're just not the same i don't think that there's going to be as much crossover as they believe that there is now as far as shake, shake the can i don't care if you guys were like well we weren't getting it done this way so we're trying it this way Fine, I'm okay with that, but I don't know that the argument could be made that be, that that because of Squadron Forty Two is going to be this oven that things are going to bake in, because this thing came out of the oven and I hate it. It doesn't smell or taste good. <laughs> I got to be honest with you. I, I mean, I I think this is one hundred percent a perfect thing for Squadron Forty Two. I don't think it has any business in the persistent universe. Nah, I you know. At least I don't like the way they're selling it to us. And, you know, look, like I said, at first I was kind of okay with it. It's fine. But now after looking at the metrics today, I'm, I'm not even remotely okay with it. This, this is, this is BS. And, and I'm kind of falling more into exactly, you know, what, what you're saying and is, uh, you know, this is forced combat mode and, you know, screw that idea, Clinton. Well, and, so, and, and, and I would argue that, you know, you've got to be really careful with, I mean, uh, with your player base. You really do. I mean, and and I, I'll, listen, I'll be the first to admit, I'm sure I live inside my own echo chamber. You know, I mean, I mostly do things with guys who are interested in industrial stuff. I have a massive amount of respect for the necessity and for the people who do combat stuff. I am okay operationally if I am in doing something with the organization and there's a bunch of us. I get why we need security. I get why we need Overwatch. I absolutely understand why we need escorts. I 100% support all of that stuff. You know, but if I'm just logging on to fly around, don't, don't, you know, you better let the people who want to play solo play solo. You know, and if you're going to say, well, then, you know, looks like you you don't get to go anywhere fun, you know, or, you know, because, because of that. Well, you got, I'm, you know, you have to be careful. I mean, there are too many games that have tried to balance on PVP, you know, and have absolutely messed up their player base. That's right. And they all, you know, I can list probably... 10 off the top of my head right now that that uh, were gone in two three years they were done you know you can't you can't make everything about PvP well and that's the thing I understand, I understand it's you know it's a cruel harsh world out there and and you know all that jazz but we're designing a game up here look man I, I've you know shit 
I've had enough conflict in my life. I want my, you know, my fantasy to be chill, right? So, well, and I don't mind a little bit of of this or that, but you know, I don't want every single time I get on to be some. I mean, look, you know, I, I think I was saying it to you earlier, Zal. You know, if if we have, you know, twenty five guys out there, and we've got, you know, like, you know, eight prospectors that are breaking, and and two moles that are scooping and overwatch and you know maybe an expanse that's uh you know or two that are kind of off you know in in a zero sector spot you know and then we're kind of moving stuff back and forth and it only takes a couple of guys to come ruin that fun you know and that's that's what i mean like i don't think you understand combat dudes understand it's that's not fun when you show up it's a it actually fucks over the night <laughs> Well, that, that, you know, <laughs> you know that, that's, and, that's where people get their jollies, and, man. And, so. and, and listen, you know, fine, you messed up the night. But what I'm saying is, is that if you think people are going to, uh, you know, just log on all the time and just allow you to just wreck them. No, that's not what's going to happen. You're going I mean, to look, chase people we, off the servers. And we get there needs to be an aspect of danger. But with the way this SCM mode is set up it's you know it's it's insta lose and it's just insta lose yeah and you know you can argue all the bullshit that you want to but you know just that one time that i told you about a minute ago that's not the only time it happens all the damn time you know and i just jump away and in this mode that's not viable you know, you you turn it off to jump away. You got no shields. You're toast. I mean, th this it's just not viable. And this crap that you know, and all respect to Avenger One. And like I said, he may or may not know what the metrics were, but with the way they're you know the way they're on the website right now, that's not a viable option either. The whole disengaging stuff that he was talking about. There ain't no way. There, there's no way. Well, and listen, I appreciate. Oh. I want to say. I mean, you know, because I know, you know, Avenger One's been kind of, you know, kind of, you know, we've said respectful things, and we've, you know, kind of used a lot of what he's saying as a, a little bit as a whipping post, you know. But I will, will, will want to say quite honestly, I do respect the fact that he un he recognizes that there's a big part of the community that are upset about this, and he's trying to put a positive spin that there's potentially yeah. a disengagement. Case. I really do respect that. I mean, I do. And I really, you know, would love to have an honest conversation about this stuff. But I, you know, fundamentally, you have to understand, from my perspective, force. this is a forced PvP mode. That's what this is. Forcing me into PvP against my will. You know, uh, and, and right now you can force me into PvP against my will. And if your argument is, well, right now it's not safe, but right now I'm perfectly happy with the way it works. And I'm, pr I you know, I, I get... At the end of the day, that's the distinction. That, right? right, that's exactly. Right now I'm perfectly happy with the way things are. I promise you if it's stun lock mode, and like I said, I think, I honestly think these, I don't think these are the last of those changes. I think that this is the this is these are this is just the beginning. It's a slippery slope, and if you think that you're gonna put in this mode and just like oh, Avenger One says, well, it's gonna, actually if you're it's gonna be easier for you to disengage, then they're gonna change it. So it's so you can't. I mean, that's yeah. the only reason you create the system is to lock people into combat. Then you're just gonna then you're just you're gonna lock them into combat and make it easy. No, then they're just gonna change it so you can't get away. So we've got to fight right now on this line before you guys put this dumb shit in here. Because if we lose this battle here, then we're definitely going to lose all the battles in, that, in, 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 in 1944 combat mode. Yep. I'm not flying around in an arrow, guys. I'm flying around in a prospector. I'm flying around in a Taurus cargo hauling. I'm flying around in a C2. Okay, that's what I'm going to be flying in Star Citizen for as long as I'm not constantly attacked and destroyed. Because well, if, look, you, if you think I'm logging in every day to be your cannon fodder, you're wrong. 
And if you don't give me mechanics or sensors to, to figure out that you're 25, 30 kilometers away and give me enough time and information to make a determination before you're on top of me about whether or not I want anything to do with you. And if you, if you're not okay with me being able to just spool up my quantum drive and dip, then I think that this game has a, sh I honestly do not think this game's going to have a shelf life. No. Well, here's the thing, man. However they decide to do it, you're, I understand there has to be the element of danger and we're all, we're good with that. That That's not what we're, we're not arguing the point. What we are arguing is if you are going to set us in this situation, you're going to have to give us an act because just getting shut down and, and you know, creamed every damn time, that's not going to be fun. And the way we're reading these metrics, that's not going to happen. Uh, you know, so there's got to be counters to this. There's going to have to be some kind know, of a You're going to have to give me the opportunity to get away. Yep. You know, however, however it has to work, you're going to, you know, you're going to have to, um, you're going to have to set up to where at least I have a fighting chance. Not just getting, you know, just pulled out and creamed every time. That that's not that's not gonna work. And I understand there has to be an aspect of danger there, fine. But you know, you're also gonna have to set it to where I have a fighting chance. And at me moving, you know, in a C two, even fully loaded, I mean fully crewed, moving at hundred and thirty five meters a second, trying to get away from you know, Gladius and in a and an arrow, you know, moving at 150 meters a second faster. My, you know, my engine, you know, putting my capacitors a full to my engines is not going to make that difference up. I mean, I and I agree with that. You know, I mean, and, and like like you said, hey, why put us in the city? You know, why you know if you if you want it to be, you know, like. PvP and criminal, you know, criminal game mode, you know, it's like being a pirate is like double hard. Well, you need to make it double hard. It's like, yeah, I saw you coming from a mile away and you're not going to catch me. Right. So, yeah. I mean, that's what that's what basically it is. You have to give me the sensors to detect you so I can then make a determination if I want anything to do with you and I can dip. And if, you know, I mean, there's no point in arguing that. I mean, that's like I want... As much as you want super advanced combat stuff, I want super advanced sensors to detect you. <laughs> I mean, what the heck, man? I mean, you know, do you, I mean, do you think that these companies are going to be flying ships all over the verse because because it's not profitable? The vast majority of the traffic that flies in Star Citizen should be safe. Yeah, unless unless you go somewhere that. You know, isn't like pyro or something, and and we we understand. You know, we understand that aspect of it, and you know, for the most part, yes, we will be flying with escorts. Trust you, me. But don't put us in a situation where everything's locked down, and you know, we just get creamed. Or, you know, or we the don't solo have a fighting player. chance. We don't have a fighting chance to get away. There's not a counter to that. Like, like, like we were talking about before. If you want to balance it, like for everything, you know, it's like, you know, you got to give up something for something. You, you know, so the manis, when it's got, you know, it's quantum dampening sister on, then it can't have guns or shields. Yep. I, it's just, just that freaking simple. That's a balancing. That's how you balance CIG. For every, you know, for everything that you you put out, you have to have a counter to it. If not, then, you know, then it's just dupe to dupe gameplay. You know, it, it's it's crap. And um so yeah, there's going to have to be a, you know, a lot of balancing, a lot of changes, and like I said, I'm perfectly fine with the standard control mode being standard combat mode. 
You know, I kind of assumed that's how it was going to roll anyways. Where it's like, if you want to fire your, you know, fire your guns up, then you got to go to that mode. Okay, cool, fine. Then leave everything else the same. Yep, I agree with that. I mean, I Jen, just don't touch the rest of it. And then yep. if, you know, and and but do not try and tell me that, you know, right now it's, it's you know, like, the way that it is now, we have to change it because there's some reason for it. And then try and convince me that that's actually... We're going to slow your your ship down a whole bunch, but that's somehow going to make it easier for you to get away. No, it's not. Well, just let me tell you, having no. the idea of my ship, you know, me uh, flying... It's like, let's just take combat out of it, for instance. Say you're in standard control mode. Well, I don't want to be flying around at 130, just just dupe to duping around, you know, so, just so I can have my shields and stuff. That doesn't sound fun to me. I know. I, don't, I mean, I'll, heck, even 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 with you, uh, see, you know, you should I, take this whole idea and just take it back to the drawing board. It's yeah, dumb. Yeah. I mean, come on, it's so fun to fly around in this game. Why would you screw it over? Yeah, it's like you're, you're, no, this is all just like with these. Come on, even with like the racers, hell, they can't even race around. You know, you you love that visceral experience of moving fast and flying low to the ground and all that jazz. Well, you know, that's gonna be different. You know, it's gonna change. You know, it's it, that's not gonna be fun anymore. It's, I mean, even I love doing that. Yeah, I do it all the time. Give me a break. Hell, man, think of it this way: shit, we we scan for quantanium of, over thirty three hundred meters oh, a second. Hell yeah, man! We used to just super, you know, go into like super cruise mode and you know look for clusters and and pivot and by, you know by the time you got your ship turned around, half the time the th damn things are out of range again. <laughs> you know, I mean. I mean yeah, man. You know, it, it, yeah. I mean, it just seems like if you're you're slowing the game down, but that's not actually going to make it funner. It's going to make it lamer. No, man. It seems like the fun police. Yeah, that's exactly. That's what it actually seems like. It seems like what this whole master mode system is is like is boohoo mode. We can't, you know, you know. I have to bring a mantis and I have to bring a blue, and I don't, you know, I actually don't want to fly those things. I want to be able to kill you without having to bring no ships mode. <laughs> that's what yeah. that's what it seems like, you know. And I mean, look, I, I I understand, you know, like different people have different things that are fun for them in this game. You know, I, I totally understand, and I don't mind being the guppy, like I said, the sheep among wolves. I don't honestly mind it, but I'm just saying that if you think people, if you think you're going to keep the same player base, but you're going to lock people into combat, you're you're not. You're gonna lose. You're gonna shad players left and right. If people just can't log on and play the game and just kind of mindlessly have a little fun and log off, they have enough stress in life. They're not gonna. It's like if you think it's like it's a, such a weird thing. Like you think it's just like well, if you don't like it, then you just need to get a lot tougher. Mm -hmm. No, I could actually just go play a different game. That's what's gonna happen. People aren't going to be like, oh my god, Eye of the Tiger, I'm going to train like Rocky and chase chickens and get a whole lot better at fighting. <laughs> I mean, they're not. I mean, yes, there's probably a, like a handful of guys who you'll make mad who will be like, oh, yes, Avenger writes, uh, Avenger 1's right. I need, to look, I need to, I better go learn all this crap so I can stay alive when Avenger 1's attack me for an extra eight <laughs> seconds. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because, yeah. yeah. listen, most people are not going to be shut in like constantly like learning every little trick of the trade combat mode i mean min maxing and listen dude if that's what you're what you're up to and and you know you have a awesome group of people who love love that fine go do that you know but what does that wh why do i have to be dragged into that you know yeah why Just, base why base a fundamental game component around it Right. Oh, that, that, that's my thing. It's just, it's, it's like you're it's, changing everything to accommodate this very small group of people who are just salty that that you know that that combat's not working out exactly how they'd hoped. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah. that's what it is. You're changing everybody's gameplay experience because because uh you're not World War 2 you know circle jerking enough. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. I mean you know, and it's just like, look, 
people are passionate about this, and I'm going to remain passionate about this because if we lose this battle over master modes, I truly believe that the, that this game is going to go south. I think that your average, like the old, because I know them, you know, I, you know, I, I, I have them on my channel. I have a specific demographic of people on my channel that I have to defend, and that's the older guy who's retired who just wants to jump on and go do a little mining. He doesn't want anything to do. He wants to just put some lasers on some rocks, you know, and then haul that stuff back. And you know something? If that guy gets jumped, you know, two or three times a year, it's not going to bother him. He'll just, whatever, I'll, you know, ha, 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 got me. But if, if it becomes a, you know, like, if people know that they can slow you down and make you go slow and blah 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 it's just gonna be griefer mode i mean it's just the, this it's a bad idea this whole thing's a bad idea it's a great idea for squadron 42 once again a single player pve game whatever whatever you want the ui the ai and you, you're just your your lone so, solo self in that it doesn't matter what speed it is because it's just single player mode you know, it does matter a lot in the Persistent Universe with other people. And I would argue that I like the system now better. And it's just like, you know, and I know the combat guys don't. I mean, they get so mad because it's not, you know, because people get away and it's joust. You know, and constantly, like, people don't, un you know, it it's ridiculous that most of the people I engage, you know, won't stay within combat range of me. It's like they're not doing it for a reason, guys. And if you think forcing them into it is going to make them stay, it's no. They're getting away. They're still playing the game. If you stop them from getting away, they're not going to be playing the game. That's the point I'm trying to make. It's like you are going to kill your player base. Understand that there's a huge demographic of people that want nothing to do with your combat. And especially, listen, if the universe is really big and occasion, like I said, occasionally once a month or, you know, three or four times a year they get jumped, they're going to be fine with it. But if you think that these older guys are going to jump on every day and be pulled out of quantum and fly around with no shields and have to go dog ass slow and then constantly get sucked into this, you know, circle jerk, they're going to quit. And I am somebody who loves Star Citizen, and I promise you, I won't be playing that either. I don't want to have to have... I do want to just be able to log into Star Citizen and go mining and not have somebody crawl up my ass. <laughs> and I mean that. And if you, there has to be both sides of it. I also do understand that if we're in Pyro and there's you know a resource bloom... And there's, you know, everybody on the server is competing for this resource bloom. But I just can't show up there and just, you know, like I'm not going to drive over to, I'm, I'm the last guy. I'm not going to fly over to, to, to jump town and then get pissed off because I got shot. <laughs> you know, I'm not, right. you know, I'm not that guy either. I'm not going to like, like they're, like they talked about all this PVP going to uh, uh, Security Post Korea. Do you know who's not going to be at Se Security Post Korea? This guy. <laughs> <laughs> Ever. <laughs> well, look, let's just kind of, it, it's one of those things where <laughs> it's, hey, look, we, you know, I, I've been known to mix it up and I don't want to sound like a hypocrite, but I want it to be one of those things where it's like, well, if I do, I do, it's fine, but I don't want to have to be locked into it. And, um, and I'll, I'll just say one more thing about that is that, you know, I, I think there needs to be a, a larger discussion over this issue. Yes. And we, you know, we, we need to really have these discussions and we, we really need to not let it go. We need to, you know, if we feel like this isn't the right thing, I mean, this is the whole point of being in development. You know figuring out the direction of the game and if we feel like that isn't you know a direction that we need to be in we 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 need to have these discussions 
make it known keep hammering it what whatever the case may be but um you know honestly feel like you're right they need to go back to the drawing board we need to you know refigure this uh because i'm gonna tell you if it is the way it is the way they're explaining it the way we're looking at it right now that's not going to be fun it just isn't i don't i don't give a crap what anybody says it's just it's not going to be fun and yeah you're absolutely right dude you know it's like yeah we have that era of danger now fine we we accept that kind of stuff but we like it the way it is now you know we 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 you know we don't accept this style of gameplay i, I just feel like you're right you know for somebody that's you know very freedom minded this is locking you into a situation and i don't like being locked into a situation it's less freedom that's exactly right there's less freedom in this system end of story hey do you want to finish the show out on a positive note i do want to finish the shot on a positive note and i, <laughs> I let me I, can, I just want to say this towards the end okay right, yes right. yes you guys have heard us be passionate okay um, and you've heard us be a little salty and definitely a little critical and and for sure you know you're gonna see that I'm very just as passionate as people are about being in combat I'm very passionate about avoiding it as much as possible because it's quite honestly it's not profitable I mean I I can't really say, say it any more than that from a purely business standpoint War isn't profitable for us industrialists in the game. It's it slows things down. You know, I I, I want to build an industrial empire in Star Citizen. I you know the the less skirmishes that I wind up in, the better. I understand there's a need for security, but anyways, I just want to say, you know, I'm perfectly willing to have a absolutely civil conversation with anybody about this. And I don't think that I, everything that I say, I, I don't know how it's going to work, work out in the end. And I would just want to say this last thing, which is, you know, um, I think, I hope that we all want the same thing, which is I want you PVP guys to have what you want. And I want to be able to have what I want. If you get me sometimes, you get me sometimes. But I also want to be able to get away, you know. And, and we all want... We, we all want a healthy game, and we all want it to right. thrive, and we want a lot of people to be playing this game. Right, and that my concern is is that when you take these freedoms away, that it's actually going to reduce the player base, not expand it. And it seems to be just for a small group of, you know, a smaller group of people, you know, that, that it, the changes are being made for, which is, this is a purely combat change, in my opinion. It's the, it's the, it, it's the main, it absolutely is. you know, it's, it absolutely yes, is. It, this has nothing to do with industrial gameplay. It has nothing to do with exploration. It has nothing to do with racing. It has nothing to do with cargo hauling. It has nothing to do with, 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 uh, with, with trading. It has, this is a purely combat thing that's, but it's affecting all of us. You know, so anyways, yes, I, 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 I need to, you know, it's, it's hard to, but I need to step down off my soapbox and let's talk, <laughs> let's talk positive stuff for, for, for the rest of the, for the rest of the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's hard, man. I mean, look, just looking at it, it just, yeah, this is fun police. This, this looks like it's taking fun away and yes. not adding fun, you know, and <clears throat> especially when you consider if you're wanting to make this game as broad as possible, you know, have a huge player base, you got to cater to the normies, people. You just do. It's just that's just the that's just the the clear facts of the matter, right? So let's go out, man. Let's let's finish it out on a positive note. Let's talk about the Crusader spirit. Oh we yeah, Q and A today. Um, you know, I'm just gonna say right off the bat, I, you know, I've been staring at these silhouettes for a while. My wife came in and goes, Hey man, are you buying a plane? And I'm like, what? <laughs> and, uh, she thought I was looking at a plane brochure. You know, wouldn't be the first time I have looked at plane brochures. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. I don't know that I've ever looked. I mean, I, 
I, I've done okay in life, but I don't know that I've ever been looking at plane brochures. <laughs> Good for you. But yeah, she she thought I was I was you know had the um, had that PDF that they had you know the spec sheet pull up. Oh so yeah. She's like hey man, you you looking at buying a plane? But um, <clears throat> I, I love the way this thing looks. I it's, do too. It, like this thing is. Like, I, I don't know any... I have not heard one person say that they don't think it looks cool. To me, this is my... Like, I and I will admit I haven't bought one yet. But this is... This will be an absolute daily driver. Like, if I... You know, between this and the Cutlass, is this is a hands down... You know, and I really like the Cutlass. But this this oh. is such a cool looking ship. Uh, I, I I really 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 like the 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 external design of this ship is fantastic, uh, and I'm excited about it. Well, when you're comparing, you know, because we compared them a little bit, and you know, today when I when I was looking around after the was you know reading through the Q and A, and you know was looking at um, the specs, you know, kind of looking at all the different ships in this range uh you know because we can we can also kind of compare it to what we were talking about things in that hundred dollar range and whether they're worth it or not and say like the cutlass black is in that hundred dollar range yeah and dude it's it's way more chip way more double the ship than the cutlass you know, it, it's almost creeping up there. You know, when we were talking, you, you were telling me you had watched an episode of uh, Info Runners, and they were talking that, you know, it may be around the size of the uh, the Crusader or the um, MS, Mercury, the, the Mercury Runner. Yeah, like they were just basically saying, look, it's it's grown in size, and it's it's a, in in more of a class of the MSR than 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 the. Um, than the cutlass and when you when it starts you know you start comparing you know against the cutlass it looks great against the msr you know it doesn't oh, it gets, look man it, it gets look it gets close uh, it's you know it's only you know 10 meters shorter yep and it's you know it's almost just as wide you know uh it's uh a little less than what about eight meters shorter in width than the than the the Merc, but uh, you know, so yeah, I mean, it, it's it's a sizable ship. It's it's a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. You know, I thought it was going to be kind of small. It, it's actually a nice size ship. It really is. I yep. mean, considering uh, you know the Dagum um, Herald, right? Right or the court, not the Herald. <laughs> Sorry, I scrolled by the Herald. My brain works like that. It's weird. It jumps at things. Uh, the Corsair. So when you look at the Corsair, you know the Corsair is only fifty-five meters in length. Right. And you know, it's twenty-seven meters wide. This thing is forty. Forty-one, right? Yeah, forty-three. Forty-three. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, that's right. It was a. So it's forty-three meters wide. And the Corsair is only 27 meters wide. Isn't that nuts? That is. And, it, and it's, yeah. you know, and it's only nine, nine meters longer, the Corsair. So, yeah, man, this is, <laughs> this is, this is bang for the buck, man. It, it, it seems like it's going to be an awesome, an awesome ship, you know, and it, it it's a Crusader. So it's going to have the agility that, you know, Crusader ships have. It's uh, for me, man. It, it, I think uh, I think you're right. I mean, you know, I love the Mercury. Uh, it's one of you know, it is my favorite, you know, non-industrial ship. Yep. Um, but uh, yeah, this thing is this thing is shaping to look up, you know, look pretty awesome, man. Oh, I agree. I think this could easily be. I mean, consider it's going to have the size two quantum drive. This is going to have. This is very much going to be. In, in a in a contention for a daily driver the other side of it is is you know i mean it does look like you're probably only going to have a you know you're not going to have your obligatory three you know 
three Crusader doors to get. You know, it doesn't look like it's, it, you know, it is interesting. It doesn't look like it's going to have a secondary entrance. I was, oh, I was really, you know, hoping that maybe there would be like a climb in on the side. That would have made this thing well, just insanely cool. You know, it's cool. funny. When they were, uh, when you, when you go into the Q&A and that question did it get asked is there a secondary entrance nope no well, secondary entrance the rel relatively small and straight line layout of the spirit wouldn't really benefit from additional entrance nor was there space to put one without other compromises assist. which is funny to say when they explicitly came out and said that the mercury they were going to do that and uh i mean this thing is you know just 10 meters shy of being the same length as Mercury, so I mean, yeah, I know it's ten meters, but you know, it's it's still kind of long. It's way longer than you know. It's twice the length of a Cutlass Black. You know, you can kind of see it in that sense, but but um, you know, regardless, man, I, I still think this thing's gonna be pretty great. So so let's blow through a few of these questions because they're interesting. So it says the ship looks almost stealthy. Will it have a lower EM signature than the Cutlass? And of course, uh, you know, the EM and IR will probably be the same, it says. But because of cross section, it's, it, it looks like it maybe will have a little bit of a reduced signature from front and from head on or running away. That makes sense. Uh, can the tractor be mount, uh, be mount on the C1 swap for the remote turret? They're saying kind of not currently now. Uh, yeah. They'll kind of watch that later. Will there be different types of bombs, like precise strikes or carpet bombs? At launch, we only plan a single type of bomb, uh, which will be a dump high explosive. However, in the future, if alternate options do exist, they will be swappable. That's interesting. Um, which weapon systems can be controlled by the pilot? By default, the pilot has control over the nose and wing guns, um, and the co-pilot having control over the rear turret. The nose guns can also optionally be controlled by the co-pilot if desired. So, yeah, I mean, you've got basically just the just really just the two people there, right? You got the pilot who's got yeah. control of most most of your firepower there, and then you know, of course, your co-pilot's got the back turret. That, that's kind of fun. It's just a two person. Looking at the stats of the Freelancer and the Cutlass Black, the Spirit seems to be in a low-end equipment-wise, shield, firepower, cargo capacity, defense capabilities. Is this, is this ship going to keep up with the high-speed capabilities of Crusader? How does the speed maneuverability of the Spirit compare to the ships of similar size? Just like other Crusader ships, the Spirit will be more maneuverable than its size normally would dictate, allowing it to run lower component loadouts while still being effective. This is the thing. I mean, this is the thing that's made me fall in love with uh, with Crusader, and it's making me fall in love with them. These things are nimble as hell. Mm. The eight, the, the the Hercules series flies. Yeah, I mean, some people would argue it's overpowered. It flies so nimble, you know. And the MSR is very nimble, and this thing's going to be incredibly nimble too. Well, I guess you know. With that being said, it is big enough to have like size three shields you know i feel I, you know it's um you know with its length and width you know it's actually fairly big so i mean it's it's twice the length of a you know of a cutlass and you know freelancer too so <laughs> I don't know if I necessarily agree with that statement, even if it is a little bit more maneuverable. Um, it is bigger, you know, a bigger target. So interesting. Can the rear turrets on the A1 and the E1 fire forward? No, um, they can't. Uh, what docking capabilities do these ships have? For example, can they dock to larger vessel? There are no docking capabilities. The Spirit is small enough to land it any location with an enclosed hangar. It's a good thing to know. What kind of living amenities can we expect to see for crew? All three variants will have the same living crew quarters, shared space, beds, kitchen area, integrated shower and toilet. The E1 has separate passengers, you know, shower and toilet. So, you know, the one that's got the, that's kind of the uh, Starliner. Um, yeah, kind of the, uh, kind of that Learjet of the, of the bunch. Yeah. That that's the way I see this thing. It it's 
set up to be more like a Learjet. Yep, and, it's a VIP, you know, type. Like of, a golf, yeah. you know, it's like a golf stream. Yes, exactly. You know, like, mm -hmm. Love it. The AT Hercules has an option slated to swap out the S10 bombs for a cluster bomb system. Uh, will the A1 have that? Nope. There's no plans for cluster bombs out of the, uh, you know, it's a smaller bomber, so it's probably going to have less, you know. Will it be modular? Which is, this is a very important. Could we buy one model, then maybe at some point in the future swap modules? Nope. Early on development, we looked at making the ship modular, but decided against it. It would require fundamental changes to how the sections were made. Uh, particularly affected the E1, which would have been much more limited in scope and size. Uh, that makes sense. Um, the PDF shows 48 SCU of your cargo in each variant. This is probably a copy-paste error. Can you confirm? It was a copy-paste error. Now, I, if I'm not mistaken, the only one of them that has any SCU at all is, and I could be wrong, but I thought it was just the C1. I don't know that the other ones have any any at all. Have you looked at that song? Yeah, I looked at them, but I don't think they've uh, changed it yet. Though. It does say the the website has corrected details now. I think it's actually the last I looked. Well, it says the you know that yeah, it says the A one uh, uh, is in a cargo, so not available. Yep. And same thing with the E one. Yeah. So. so the only one that's got cargo is the cargo hauler. Well, you know what's funny? Before we even knew the metrics and its size and things, uh, the other day I, I was still, you know, when we first, you know, after we were kind of talking about CitizenCon, uh, I still was thinking forty-eight seems really low. Yeah. You know? And now that this thing is twice the size of a Freelancer or um, a Cutlass, it you know it, it even seems. You know, it's like, heck, the MSR has 114. <laughs> well, and, and, and this, is, this is only 10 meters shorter, you well, know. And, so. well, and the Cutlass has 46. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so, so you think that it, it, this would at least hold 60 to 80. So, easy. So, the, with Spirit variants, can carry vehicles. Uh, the C1 is designed to fit. Uh, vehicles that are cyclone, cyclone sized or smaller. So that's probably. Is that. Will an ROC fit in there? Well, it will in the C1. Yeah, uh, interesting. Um, you know, they were talking about, well, though, you know, people find a way to cram stuff in there in the other variants. But. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, we're always looking for. You know, obviously that it would be good, definitely good to know that that's a that's a, a potential ROC hauler, especially with how nimble it's going to be. Uh, the A1 Spirit Bomber variant has the round dish on top of the roof, but the specs don't show the same scanner. What's the round feature? The round dish on top is just a rule of cool aesthetic. Okay, fair enough. N no. That is kind of a, that is kind of a disappointing uh, um, a little bit considering what this thing does. You would think that it would have, you know, kind of long range scanning to know what it can do its bombing run or whatever. So interesting. It, you know. Like there's must have been some lore brand I, I, I never really thought about this. You know, that the most crusader ships have Greek and Roman mythology. Where'd the spirit name come from? Uh Crusader seen the spirit as a new direction for the brand, starting with the Starfighter. Uh, the company has been moving away from transport dedicated routes and expanding into new markets with the Spirit's multi role functions. Decided to leave the old naming nomenclature behind. Yeah, they've just kind of grown out of it a little bit, it looks like. You know, what's funny though is kind of Crusader, the reason it's called Crusader, it's is their, you know, their whole um, ideology was based on religion to begin with. Oh, I didn't, did not know that. Yep. And. So, you know, having the, the spirit name, it sounded, you know, it sounded fine with me, but um, because, you know, it's one of the things is that, um, you know, the founder was real religious. So interesting. That's why I was called Crusader. That is cool. Well, this this ship's fantastic. I mean, ship pipeline's done a great. I mean, they've done a great job with the the, the design of the ship's just cool as heck. Uh, and I think it's going to be an welcome. You know, there's you know, it's funny because the great the game has a lot of ships that are kind of, you know, around this size and purpose. Um, 
But I, I don't. I see this as a. I see this ship as a victory. I think it's a. It's a cool looking ship. Cru, uh, Crusaders kind of has. They're kind of their. Their free. It's their freelancer of the bunch, if you will. And um, I'll tell you, out of all the out of all the ships in the game right now that are around that one, this is the one I like the best. Oh, I, I dig this, man. Yeah, a lot. It, it's uh, it ticks a lot of the buttons for me. Um, like I said, um, aesthetically, it looks awesome to me. Yeah, uh, it's it's right up my alley with design. Yep. It really it you know with um, it really has those Crusader you know design cues. It it yeah it, it's exactly you know I, I was talking about wanting. You know another crusader ship in the game and I, I think they for me they nailed it yeah i think for me they nailed it as well i do kind of wish that there was you know i do kind of wish there was one more variant which would almost be like almost like a nomad style variant where where there was just kind of like a, a space camper variant <laughs> you know that would be you know cool. i would say you know one that I feel like would actually be right up this alley is kind of uh, kind of a more explorer variant. I don't disagree. Longer range, better scanning, that type of thing. Yep, yeah, that would have been that would have been just great too. You know, I mean, and that's that's the one thing. You know, like uh, yeah, exactly. Like maybe almost like a uh, uh, um, a terrapin style variant. Yep, something like that would have been cool, yeah. especially yeah. if it had. You know, like kind of like I said, maybe a cross between the Terrapin and the Nomad, where it kind of had that space camper kind of feel. But you know, like it's well, that, that's their whole shtick. You know that that's the other thing that um, that Crusader has going for it is its durability. Yes, you know, all the Crusader ships are supposed to be ultra durable, ultra you know easy to fix. That whole bit, it you know having that like like you were saying, having that Terrapin style would be you know right in line with this as well so yep yep well i 100 percent love yep just you know positive very all positives all around uh love the ship and uh i'm really looking forward to uh you know really looking forward to some more information on that mining ship that's going to come out in the future as well yeah i wonder if we're going to hear a little bit more about it at ie um something you know some some announcements you know coming out for IAE. yeah i mean we definitely know that the you know it's it was an rsi win <laughs> so <laughs> you know i mean i zell and i you know it's not you know we we definitely were hoping for misc i think they got the lowest amount of votes um but that's okay you know i mean that that really is okay a couple last things i want to say zell before we take off for the night number one uh i did get that green paint on the you know i bought a cutlass red in game recently um, and I put the green paint on it and man, I, that, that Halloween green, that's fun. That's a, it's a great, you, you it, like, you like that green? I, you know, it's a great looking color. I mean, it's, it's not, it's not really up my, like I wouldn't normally do it, but I just kind of enjoyed it. Just the theme of it or whatever. Um, right. and I, you know, I just, yeah, I, you know, the, the Cutlass Red is a, is a fun ship to fly around. Um, you know, obviously we we're just talking about Cutlasses. Uh, I really do. Um, think that it's a great ship to fly around. It really it looks great in the green. Um, and yeah, I just, uh, you know, I don't advocate uh, paints that much, but, um, you know, if you happen to get like a, a Drake ship and you want kind of a, a cool, you know, a cool vibe, I think that green looks good on the, on the, um, Caterpillar. I think that green looks good on <laughs> just about anything really, you know, I, you know, uh, the, I, I, you know, anyways, I enjoy, yeah, I've enjoyed that, that green paint job on that Cutlass Red this week. Uh, the few times I've been able to fly it around. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm a sucker for buying the paint. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I I enjoy that that too. I haven't had a chance to to dig into that yet, and and uh, but yeah, I am gonna buy that that paint. It looked pretty cool. Um, yeah, you know, I feel like that's another great way of supporting the game absolutely is, uh, you know just getting out there and bond the paints and you know maybe they'll uh at some point they'll get caught up and you know have a lot more customization uh options you know if they're wanting to do like a microtransaction situation 
a lot more customizational options for your ships where you can, you know, uh, buy a five dollar skin or paint job or you know add a you know add a, some sort of uh, you know some sort of cosmetic component to the outside of your ship. You know that's what I'm talking about with skins. Yep. Uh, you know I feel I, I would totally support that. Absolutely. So. Well, Zal. Anything, anything else you want to talk no, about? No, I was just going to say, you know what, guys? I know this has been a really passionate one tonight. So, you know, thanks for hanging in there with us. Uh, I promise you at some point we're just going to have a really fun one on just salvage or something, you know. Um, in the near future, there's just going to be, it's just going to be Zell and I, happy yo lucky, loving the game. Uh, you know, it's funny. I mean, it's, I, we're not the only content creators, and I, you just need to look around. You know, you have Salty Mike, who's, you know, just basically saying, hey, I'm not feeling it too much anymore. Uh, you know, you got Grumpy's Rehab. <laughs> you know, you've got Morph, who took a, just took a beating on just saying something about the A2. Uh, you know, you, you really do have a lot of community. Um, I mean, it's it's been a bit, you know, it hasn't been, in the most respectful sense, it's been a tough 317 cycle. You know, it has been. A t there's been a lot of, you know, the game hasn't been as running as smoothly. Uh, that some, a lot of deadlines have come and gone. Um, and so, yeah, I think that, you know, you're, you're, you know, some of the way that you're catching, you know, from is, is part of that. And I do hope that, that, that these waves just kind of crest at some point and we kind of just get back to just kind of loving, you know, every day, happy go lucky, just playing star citizen again. And, you know, uh, and, and, and who knows if that will ever be a thing, but you know, like, uh, you know, I, I really do hope for it and thanks everybody out there for listening. Um, I, you know, it, like I said, uh, you're, you're not one thing I can honestly tell you is that it comes from a place of the, of just wanting the game to succeed and wanting everybody to be able to find their own way in it. I, I definitely am somebody who you could always sit down with and, and we could, we could build bridges and compromise our way through most things, you know. Um, you know, I don't want it to be, you know, it could be very easy. I don't want the verse sanitized for any trouble. I just want to be able to get away, you know. So, anywho, that's it. That's uh, that's all I got. How about you, Zell? Why to wrap us up? For yeah, I mean, look, I feel like I share your sentiment exactly. It's, uh, I feel like we can find a compromise and something that's going to be fun for everybody. Uh, I, I definitely feel like it and you know up until now i don't the devs haven't been those type of devs that just put their foot down and say hey that's just just how it's going to be um but you know i think we can <clears throat> think we can figure some stuff out you know that saying you know we also need to make sure that we have these healthy discussions out there with everybody and and say hey look you know you see it one way, we see it another. Can we find a compromise? I, I, I most definitely believe we need to work on that. Absolutely. There, you know, this this game's in development. We just, you know, we need to make sure that that uh, you know we we have a game that everybody digs. So, um, so I think I think in that in that sense, man, not to belabor this issue all that much, but yeah, absolutely. There's another little little positive thing man i didn't i hadn't told you but i'm gonna tell it's gonna be a reveal for everybody out there is that hey man think of it this way we're being re really well received in switzerland we uh we're rolling up the positions on the apple podcast rankings in switzerland right now so that's that's really positive everybody's like uh thinking that we're doing pretty great in switzerland so hey switzerland thanks man yeah, shout out to everybody in switzerland hey, Switzerland, thanks for uh hanging out with us you guys i had no idea you know uh absolutely beautiful country um you know uh i have a, a real good friend named bjorn i don't know if he still lives in switzerland i haven't talked to him in a real i guess in a little while but i think he does live in switzerland i i uh you know hey you know i mean not 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 a bad place to visit some days, Al. If we ever, you know, if we ever got lucky enough to, to do something. Oh no, man, that, absolutely. <laughs> uh, so just a reminder for everybody out there: we are on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, yes, 
Uh, we're on all major podcast platforms. Uh, we're under the Explorers League on those platforms. So if you're looking for us, make sure that you type in Explorers League and you'll find us there. Mm-hmm. Um, also, uh, you know, we've been kind of hinting at some stuff that's uh, going to be coming up pretty soon. Uh, we're planning on doing some live streaming here coming up, hopefully in the next month. So you guys look forward to that. Um, so that should be pretty fun. We get to interact with everybody and, uh, and you know, have some great conversations with the community. Looking forward to that. How about you? I am very much looking forward to that. I mean, uh, one of the things that I do know, cause I get, you know, I stream now and then is, um, there's just a beautiful interaction with people. Uh, and people are very interested in kind of um, sharing live, uh, you know, kind of what their thoughts or, you know, or what their opinions are on whatever the, is the, the, the topic du jour. And um, I think that, Zell, I think that people who enjoy the podcast, um, you know, when we begin doing more of these live casts and these types of things, I do think that we're going to have a lot of fun with the, you know, with, the, you know, with the people who um watch and who participate um and i think that's the one thing i think you know i think you and i are most excited about is being able to kind of build community have people kind of be able to give their opinions as well um and be able to kind of you know that's the thing you know obviously uh uh when the two of us talk it's you know it's definitely going to kind of be you know kind of in that dimension that it is but if you add that extra dimension of people's comments and that type of thing then you know i honestly think that that could 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 benefit the conversation as well i think there's some organic places that it could get taken uh when people make good comments you know i watch content creators who pick up on that stuff properly um i i think it's going to be a win for everybody oh yeah you know that's why we got into this is to build an awesome community and you know we we don't talk about the explorers league a lot on the podcast uh, but when we start live streaming, we're going to be talking a lot about the Explorers League. we got a lot of, a lot of things that we have planned for that in the future. We yes. have a lot of, a lot of awesome things for the Explorers League channel. Um, so you guys, man, just stay tuned, uh, um, and you know, look forward to all that stuff. And, and you guys that love this <laughs> long form content, um, Make sure that you give us a like if you like what what you hear. And, you know, give us a little discussion down in the comments. You know, tell us what you guys think about these master modes. Tell us we're wrong. I mean, we're okay with it. I mean, hey, you know, exactly. Tell us if we're way off the mark or, you know, or, you know, if it's some fears that you guys have had, you know, you know, let us know about it. You know, uh, some you know some of these things and you know maybe we can kind of talk through all this stuff and uh you know figure it out uh so yeah just let us down you know let us know down in the comments below and uh, you know if you don't want to get into that conversation tell us what you think about the spirit man we, we thought it was pretty awesome so we did and uh with that being said we're gonna see you next week on another rock runners report